Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Peji Kemeka. I'm from the University of Gaoundere in Cameroon. I am here to tell you about quantum topological data analysis. The aims of this talk is to prepare topological data analysis researchers for the coming quantum revolution. This is because quantum computers are becoming available to general public. Therefore, time has come to make quantum algorithms accessible to everyone, including developers, researchers, engineers, and so on. The plan of our presentation is given as follows. We start with an introduction, and then we present the classical persistent homology follow with the quantum persistent homology. The presentation we end with the conclusion and our references. Topological data analysis is a recent field of mathematics at the intersection of algebraic topology, computer science, and statistics. It aims to provide a collection of methods to find the pattern of the data. For example, when we are seeing this figure, we are seeing some phone cloud with uh, the underlying pattern. For example, the first image has a cone cloud which look like a line. Therefore, linear regression can enable us to get this line of best fit, which is the pattern of our data, and it is very useful to make prediction. When we observe the second image, we can see that the point cloud is grouped into three sub -path. Each of them is called a cluster of our data. And this cluster are uh, obtained thanks to the clustering analysis method. If we observe now the last image, we can see that the point cloud has the pattern of a circle. And when we observe the method that we have just mentioned, we can see that they are unable to fit the shape of this circular pattern. Therefore, we can say that topological data analysis has emerged to solve uh, the great problem that were no solved with classical data analysis method. This is an example. Whereas we know very well that all TDA methods are able to recover this circular pattern. What about quantum topological data analysis? Quantum topological data analysis, which is uh, QTDA for short, is about how quantum computers and quantum information processors can learn pattern in data that cannot be learned by classical topological data analysis algorithm. The key idea in this theory is to take a high dimensional vector, let's say here with dimensional L and map it into what we call quantum state. And the advantage is that when we are working with the quantum version, it takes a lot of n bit to be described, whereas the original vector takes uh, order n bit to be described using classical computers. 
So we can already guess that quantum computers can guarantee an exponential compression of the representation of the data. And this will probably uh, help us to manipulate the data with less time. So why do we need quantum computers for topological data analysis? The first reason is that quantum systems are famous to generate strange and unpredicted patterns that cannot be generated by classical systems. And we believe that if we have a device that can generate unexpected pattern in the data, automatically such a device we will also be able to predict strange pattern in the data. And topological data analysis is about predicting the pattern of the data or about recovering them. Another thing that is interesting for us to know is that classical algorithms in topological data analysis are based on linear algebra, generally thanks to the boundary map in the case of persistent homology. And it is very well known that quantum computers can perform linear algebra exponentially fast as compared to the classical computer. Therefore, the advantage of this exponentially fast is that quantum computer can enable us to analyze large scale and very big data, as we have seen here, than if the data has a big dimensionality or, a high, or if a data is in high dimensional quantum computer, we describe it without re requiring a very large amount of uh, stockage in the quantum random access memory. Another thing that we hope that quantum computer with help is the curse of dimensionality, because we know that many algorithms in topological data analysis are suffering from this curse of dimensionality. And we have seen that quantum computers are very good in dealing with the curse of dimensionality thanks to deep map. By the way, the device that allow us to map this data into the quantum state is called QRIM, which is quantum random access memory. So we hope that with this new technique, the computational cost is going to be very improved. What does that mean? That if an algorithm is taking a lot of time in the classical uh, computer, when we are dealing with the quantum computer, it will take less time. And the computational is going to be very effective. In topological data analysis, we have two main methods. The first one is called mapper algorithm, and the second one is called persistent homology, which is going to be the algorithm of our concern in this talk. So what is persistent homology? It's an algebraic method for designing topological feature of the data. By topological feature, we generally mean n-dimensional code. The pipeline of persistent homology is given as follows. We start with the data as we are building ball around each data point with a certain ratio R. We follow the strategy, which is when two balls intercept we build a one simplex between them. That means that more generally, when k balls we intercept, we build a k minus one simplex between them. By doing so, for all possible value of radia, as you can see in the year on explanations, we will have an increasing sequence of patterns called filtration. When we have the filtration, we can now check the pattern that persists the most 
For example, on this case, let us assume that this is the pattern that has existed the most. Its homology will then reveal to us the pattern of our original data. In this pipeline, there are two main steps that need to be explained. The first one is how to move from data to simplicial complex. And the second one is if we obtain the simplicial complex, how can we compute the homology that we then enable us to detect the pattern of our data? For this, we need a device which is called a simplex. What does a simplex mean? A K simplex is just a convex whole of K plus one affinely independent point. That means that it satisfies this definition one. For example, a zero simplex is a point. A one simplex is an edge. A two simplex is a triangle. A three simplex is a tetrahedron. When I have now this element, I can now build a simplicial complex by grouping them. What does that mean? It means that a simplicial complex is just a bunch of simplicity. Let's say that I obtain, for example, this simplicial complex called here K. The second step for me now is to be able to compute the homology as we explained here. And to do it, we need a space called K chain. How can we define a space called K chain? It is usually denoted CK of X, where X is the simplex, which is actually a vector space generated by the K simplex. For example, C0 of X is a vector space generated by the zero simplexes. That means that V, W, X, Y, Z. That's why I have this. C1 of X is a vector space generated by edges. That means that A, B, C, D, E, and F. And when I have a vector space like this, I can add two. Two, two. Like I can add A plus B. A plus B. Because it's a vector space with the operator plus. More generally, a K. The CK of X on our K is zero because uh, when K is greater or equal to three, I don't have such high dimensional simplex on this simplicial complex. Let us rem remind that we are using here the field Z2 because it is efficiently implemented by computers. So when we have now a space of uh, k chain, you can define the boundary operator given with this formula inside this box, which is in fact a linear map from a k simplex to a k minus one uh, chain, for a k chain to a k minus one chain. And this boundary map allow me to define the k cycle which is the space, which are the kernel of the boundary delta k and the k boundary, which are the image of the boundary at k plus one. And these source spaces allow me to define the k homology group h k of x given by this formula inside this box. And to obtain the shape or the pattern of our data, I need now to find the bit number from this homology, which is nothing but the dimension of the homology. What does that mean? It means that the bit number k is the dimension of the, hom the k homology group. Intuitively, the bit number is a signature of our data. What does that mean is that it means that if I have the bit number, I can automatically uh, find 
the pattern of my data. For example, if my bit number is one for the bit number zero and zero everywhere, I will conclude that I am dealing with a point. If my bit number is, for example, one, two, one, and zero everywhere, when from three, I will conclude that I am dealing with the Klein bottle. So the bit number is the signature of our data. But the problem is that uh, they are very demanding to calculate, even on the best classical computer. And even if you are not dealing with so large data set, therefore, there is a need to find another computer. That is why we are here interested in quantum uh, computers. Before moving on, I would like to say that the bit number zero is giving the number of clusters in our data. Yeah, this data has only one cluster. That's why the bit number is one everywhere. The bit number one is giving me a one dimensional hole like this one on this circle. That's why the bit number here is one. More generally, the k, the bit number k is counting the k dimensional hole. So you were saying that there is a need to use quantum computers to deal with such bit number. And to do it, we need to map a k simplex into a quantum state. What does that mean? That you can store it in a n qubit as given here in this definition. What does that mean? It means that if I have my simplicial complex X like this, I'll start by uh, giving the zero simplex in the quantum state as follow. I can start with uh, the simplex with the zero simplex, that means that the V zero V is going to be what? One and zero everywhere. How can we get it? We start by putting one, one, one everywhere. How many times? One, two, three, four, five times. And then I should make all the ones into zero, zero, where the, ve the vertex is no part of what I'm dealing with. Here I'm dealing only with V. That's why I have one and zero everywhere. Here I'm dealing only with W. That's why I have one at the second position and zero everywhere. Let us try to explain it for the two simplex k. A two simplex k is involved with the V W X. That's why I have here V W X one one and zero everywhere. When I have my simplicity as quantum state, I can think about um, mapping the boundary operator into a quantum random access memory. To do it, I need to use this formula given by three. What does that mean? It means that if I'm looking for the boundary of a simple like this one, it so it become this alternative sum of this minus the this one down plus this other one, and in, in quantum state, it is as if I am finding the boundary operator of one one one, which becomes what this one is clearly what we don't have one. That's why at one I have zero and one one. Minus here we don't have in this sample we don't have two. That's why I have one one and zero in the middle plus this last one. That means that the position one and two will be one one and zero at the final position. When I have my boundary operator as quantum state, I can now find the Betty number, which is the dimension of the 
combinatorial Laplacian given by this formula inside this box here. What does that mean? It means that the k bt number is the dimension of the kernel of the combinatorial Laplacian delta k. Delta k with this symbol is the transpose complex conjugate of the boundary delta k. To sum up, when I have my data and I want to compute Betty number in the sense of quantum computer, I start with the point cloud as I am building ball around each data point with a certain radius. I will have an increasing sequence of spaces called filtration. Let us imagine for one moment that this is uh, the simplicial complex that has existed uh, along the filtration. And I would like to compute the k bt number, which will enable me to describe the pattern of the original data. I should first find the boundary operator in the quantum state as I did here with this formula three. And then from that boundary operator, I will compute the combinatorial Laplacian with this formula inside the box. It is actually an operator. When I have then the combinatorial Laplacian delta k, I should then find the k and then find the dimension. That will then give me the Betty number, which represents the number of uh, cluster for the zero Betty number, the number of one dimensional hole for the Betty number one, the number of the two dimensional hole, and so on. And that enables me to describe the pattern of my data. So, in conclusion, we can say that quantum computer can perform calculation in that is uh, intractable on the classical computer as we have seen first that the representation is very interesting we can also say that quantum computer can drastically reduce both execution time and energy for example for this Betty number here, if we are using a quantum computer, it will take order uh, n to the cube. That means in order n to the power three. Meanwhile, in the classical computer, it takes times order two to the two n. You can see that it will take too much time when I am in classical dealing with the classical computer, the n year is the number of the data points. Therefore, quantum computer will provide an exponential speed up when solving real world problems using topological data analysis. In the future tutorial, we will discuss other important notions in quantum topological data analysis more specifically, we discuss in detail the notion of QRAM, the notion of QBIT, the notion of emission matrix B, the notion of phase estimation algorithm. Another thing that we are planning to do is to carry out some concrete computation, given that we will not just write the formula here as we did, but we will use it on an example. Another thing that we plan to do in the future tutorial is to conduct tutorial on quantum programming, especially on quantum programming related to the topological data analysis. Why is it that it that uh, the reason why we want to do it is that uh, quantum programming is very different from classical programming. So. We believe that by next year, everybody will, will be very comfortable with quantum programming or with the 
the quantum revolution in general. Here is our references. Thank you for watching this video and bye bye. Feel free to ask any question by commenting this video. You can also like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.